Welcome, Grasshopper, to this most spiritual edition of View from the Bleachers. I am Tim Jones, your shaman and personal guru on your life quest in search of spiritual fulfillment. I am an incredibly spiritual person, probably way more so than you, but don't worry. I have learned that in the game of life, it's not just who makes the most money or has the nicest house, though mine is pretty nice. No, these are so shallow, so shallow. No, it's about being a better person. And by better person, I mean better than the person next to you with whom you're competing for a slot in heaven. In this week's very personal video, I will share with you the wisdom of my teachings so that you will learn what you truly need to know to gain an edge over your spiritual competitors. More on the other side. Welcome back, Harvey Krishna. Oh, and my gentle, innocent tadpole, there's one thing you must learn to succeed in life's journey, and that's that you must compete because life is a zero sum game. There are winners and there are losers. And nowhere is this more true than in the game of your spiritual quest. It's not enough anymore to be good. You have to be number one. I'm widely regarded as an expert on competitive spirituality. And not to brag, but it's just a matter of time before I overtake the Dalai Lama on the footpath to enlightenment. The Dalai Lama once told me over a latte at a Starbucks in Northern India, my religion is kindness. Well, I'm here to tell you my kindness is better than yours, Dalai Man. In order to achieve spiritual supremacy, you have to demonstrate your supremacy. Oh, sure, it can sound arduous. You're probably asking yourself, what do I have to do? Go on a 2,000 mile trek across the Gobi Desert? Fast for a month in a cave? Climb Mount Everest wearing nothing but a toga and sandals? <laughs> Slow down, Skippy-san. Those journeys are way more hassle than they're worth. Plus, you'd almost certainly miss out on opening day of baseball. No, my tactics for achieving spiritual superiority are far less taxing, and many can be achieved while lying on the couch. You see, most people behave passive aggressively, but you can outsmart them by behaving aggressively passive. They'll never know what hit them. You will want to casually drop loaded words into everyday conversations to intimidate your friends and coworkers. For example, aura or chi or chakra. Don't worry if you don't know what any of these words mean. Trust me, your golfing buddy buddies won't either and they're going to feel a pang of inadequacy and you'll move one square past them on the board game of life. One of my favorites to throw around is the term shadow. In addition to being a great name for a Harley motorcycle or any black cat, it can also refer to the areas of your life you're afraid to face. This word is best used in the form of a question anytime your boss gets on your case for dropping the ball. Just smile, tilt your head slightly, and gently reply, Bob, you say you're displeased with my work performance. Are you sure your discontentment isn't about your own shadow? And then bow and walk out the door. Problem solved. Whenever somebody asks you to do something that you don't feel like doing, simply respond thus. I'm not able to take out the trash at the present time, but I affirm you for asking and then smile warmly. And for extra effect, try bestowing them a necklace of beads. Bestowing beads is always a nice touch. Here are some other excellent words that you can use to let people know you're just a little more spiritually enlightened than they will ever be. Journey, as in, I'm sorry I failed to pick up the dry cleaning on my way home like you asked. I had to take a little detour on my spiritual journey. Abundance, as in, I'm not sure why you keep asking me to repay that $500 you lent me last May. If you just open up your heart, you'll see that the universe is abundant. Or energy, as in, honey, I know you wanted me to rake the leaves today, but I decided to channel my energy towards listening to my aura, by which I would find my inner bliss in some quiet solitude, which is code for watching the game in your man cave. The key is to redefine all your acts of selfishness, laziness, or self-absorbed behavior as steps on your pathway towards truth and enlightenment. If you want to take your spiritual game to the next level, then 
During a conversation, make a point of smiling openly and holding eye contact for an uncomfortably long period of time, preferably without blinking. Not only will you come across as thoughtful and perhaps a bit creepy, but you'll also get the added bonus of making others feel embarrassingly shallow and uneasy. Practice by staring at your dog, but I must warn you, you'll probably lose. Fido is an expert at this game. Another fun technique to impress and cause slight discomfort in your friends is to randomly jump into various yoga poses. Say your coworkers start telling you a boring story about his seven year old's latest t-ball game. Well, simply raise your arms to the sky in the warrior one pose and act like nothing is happening. Maintain locked eye contact the entire time. If he asks, what exactly are you doing? Just tell him that you're readjusting your chakras. Trust me, he'll feel too intimidated to ask for clarification. But a word of caution, don't try yoga's downward facing dog position while driving. Your visibility can become limited and I discovered it's actually really hard on the back. So finally, whenever you start or end a conversation, put your hands together, bow slightly and mutter namaste. It's a term based on the Hindu belief that there is a divine spark within each of us, which is located in, oh hell, it really doesn't matter what it means, but just keep bowing, smiling, and namasteing, and you'll be on the inside track towards spirituality and victory over your friends. I wish you peace, my friend. Mind you, not as much peace as I wish for myself, but more peace than for anybody else on your neighborhood watch list. Well, that's the view from the bleachers. Perhaps I'm off base. I'm Tim Jones and remember, if you like this video or simply feel sorry for me, please click on the subscribe button below and share this video with your friends or anyone you'd like to annoy. And for more of my humor, visit my website, viewfromthebleachers.net.